boom boom ba doom ba doom ba doom ba doom This is the fucking news! Kia ora. Here we are with the last video game news before E3. The pre-E3 shenanigans are in full swing and leaks are dropping all over the place. Another big news week. Let's start with the most interesting one. The big one. We touched on it a few weeks ago, but now it's fully emerged with a November 14 release date. Google Stadia. Stadia. Whatever it's called. The streaming service that allows you to play games straight to your TV, PC, laptop, tablet, or even some of their phones. So what do we know so far? There are two packages, a basic and a pro. Basic has no monthly fee. You pay for the games you want to play at full price and you can stream them up to 1080p and with stereo sound. Pro will cost $9.99 a month. Select games will be discounted, otherwise full price purchases. Stream the games in up to 4K with 5.1 surround sound. They also tout free games released regularly starting with Destiny 2, including all previous and upcoming add-ons, which makes sense as the base game's going free to play, but more on that later. If you have capped internet, you need to watch out. Streaming your games at 4K will use just over 15 gigabytes an hour. It's not ideal. If you've got a terabyte limit, that's only 65 hours of playing games at 4k effectively and as any gamer knows that's fuck all a month really here's a quick list of games confirmed for stadia so far doom eternal obviously destiny 2 the crew 2 get packed grid fm saban's power rangers battle for the grid mortal kombat 11 farming simulator 19 outer scrolls online dark Siders, genesis trials rising wolfenstein youngblood Baldur's gate 3 more on this later. Just Dance Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, Thumper, Final Fantasy 15, Ghost Recon, Breakpoint, Rage 2, The Division 2, Samurai Showdown, Metro Exodus, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and Borderlands 3. Huge games. Some big games from some big devs and what appears to be some big dreams. Will Stadia work? I mean, it has the potential to either be hugely successful or a massive flop. Now, maybe it's because I live in a backwater town in the middle of buttfuck nowhere, but I just don't think the internet is stable enough. When I play games at the moment on a North American server, I have to live with 200 plus ping. I can't even imagine what that would be like as input lag as well. Obviously, this means all games are online only, single player too. Network or power outages at either end are going to affect you. You can't play games. And then buying games in this manner also takes us further away from ownership of those games. What happens to our library if Google shut the service down? That's a real risk. Google Plus. I'm calling flop. Next. Destiny 2. I mentioned briefly they've announced a free-to-play model. Kind of. The base game and all year one missions will be free. New expansions will be released as standalone games at a one-off cost. So you can pick and choose what expansions you want to get. You don't have to get them all. Even though we both know you're going to. So Bungie has split from Activision, which is awesome news. I shy away from just about everything with an EA or an Activision tag these days, solely because they are profit machines and nothing else. They don't care. I digress anyway. With the split from Activision, Destiny 2 will be moving to Steam. It will also introduce cross-save between all platforms. No cross-play though, but at least if you own multiple devices, you can pick and choose where you want to play. So with this in mind, it should be pretty easy to move all of your Destiny data from Blizzard currently over to Steam. Now, I don't want to make assumptions here, but that should also mean you don't have to make multiple purchases of the expansions, right? One account, one expansion. I hope so anyway. With this move, they're also doing away with exclusives as well. Everything will be available to everybody. They've announced a renewed focus on PvP. Nothing more on this yet, but that's something. PvP's atrocious at the moment. Shadowkeep is the new expansion. We're going back to the moon. If you played Destiny 1, you're going to be familiar with it. Gear is going to have more mod slots now. Bungie are doubling down on depth and detail and are embracing the MMORPG title. Good. That's what I want. I'm in. So September 17, I'll see you there. Next news. All right, confirmed. The big three is Baldur's Gate 3. Larian Studios have been out there dropping some weird tentacle teasers in the lead up to this announcement. Nothing like a little tentacle porn to get the audience fired up. Get ready to control a party of adventurers or fellow players and explore Baldur's Gate and beyond. Larian have said they're trying to stay true to Dungeons and Dragons and keep it as pure as they can while still offering the studio's trademark playful systems. Now I haven't played Baldur's Gate before, nor have I played Dungeons and Dragons in any shape or form, but I have a lot of faith in this developer and am pretty damn excited for this. Watch out for it at the PC Gamer segment of E3. Last big one. Pokemon Sword and Shield. Pokemon Direct has delivered, and it's delivered something fierce. Godzilla mode. Before I kick off, the two new legendaries, the cover art, the Pokemon the games are named after, are lame as hell. They are awful. Zamazenta and Zacian, if that's how you say it, the shield wolf and the sword wielding wolf, reminiscent of Sif from Dark Souls. Don't let how awful these guys look 
take away from how good the rest of the game is looking though. Environments and world design look to have changed massively. It looks more like Xenoblade Chronicles than a Pokemon world and that is amazing. That's great. The Pokedex is gone. Technology has arrived and instead we now have the Rotom phone. Yes, like Scrotum. Rotom. It appears to have more functions too, like attaching to the bike to move faster and to cross water. So maybe some of the HMs are now gone? We already know Fly's been replaced by the Taxi Corviknight, the Raven Pokemon. By far the best looking of the 5T's Generation 8 Pokemon, and as the replacement to Fly, he's useful too. The Pokemon Let's Go style of encounter remains, where you can see Pokemon roaming around the map and avoid or engage them as you see fit. It also appears random battles will still exist in some form in the tall grass. What is Godzilla mode? It's the new dynamics mechanic. Like Z moves and Mega Evolutions, this is a temporary move you can activate in battle. They can be used once per battle and last three turns, so use them wisely. Remember, if you can do it, you know gym leaders are gonna do it too. Transforming grows your Pokemon to giant sizes, boosting their power and transforming all their moves to max moves, which are powerful and can trigger additional effects. This is where raid battles come in. You and up to three players can fight a permanently Dynamax Pokemon by joining forces. Only one of you can Dynamax your own Pokemon too, so choose wisely. Beat them, and you can try to catch them. Character customization looks fairly minimalist, but there is customization, so I'll take that. November 15th, I'm gonna be broke. I'm just getting one, even though the double pack looks really cool. Alright, that's all the big stuff, now on to the little things. Sony have said they will never stop making story-based narrative games. Yes, the games industry is changing and live service games are growing in popularity. Games like Apex Legends and Fortnite are dominant, but Sony have said they've never had greater success with their own story-based narrative-driven games than they're having right now. Which backs up take two stance that Fortnite isn't killing the gaming industry, it's growing it. People don't just play one game and it replaces all of their gaming fix. We have a broad range and one game doesn't necessarily replace the other. The Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order cover art has been released, and surprise, surprise, I'm not a fan. The minimalist image used months ago would have made for far better cover art in my opinion. I already hate the main character. Xbox has partnered with Lynx, or X as you might know it where you're from, to drop a new fragrance range. Shower gel, body spray, deodorant, you name it. A fresh scent of pulsing green citrus featuring top notes of kaffir lime and winter lemon. Aromatic herbal middle notes of mint and sage and woody bottom notes of patchouli and clearwood. In other words, citrusy green smelling. The creator of the Xbox off to drink himself into a stupor and hope this all goes away. A Jumanji video game is coming. Four teenagers jump into a retro video game as opposed to the traditional board game concept. I cannot wait for this. Not because I want to play it, I couldn't care less, but I can't wait to see Jables jamming it when it comes out. That man has the best YouTube content of everyone. Period. That's my Friday every single week. Jablinski Games! No game in this week. Competitive farming simulator is a thing. This is massive and frankly just unbelievable to me. The Farming Simulator Pro League has a 100,000 euro grand finals prize pool. Giant Software has released Farming Simulator League Mode. It requires the base game Farming Simulator 19 to play and features a ban phase for banning particular machinery. It's a real eSport apparently. You play on separate but identical fields and have the ability to mess with each other by causing the opposing side's hay bale conveyor belt to overheat and shut down. My mind is absolutely blown by this. I cannot believe Farming Simulator is an eSport, but good. This is what eSports need, just this broad range of ridiculous games. Last week I mentioned that taking Darksiders in a fresh direction well here it is, Darksiders Genesis had a trailer drop revealing a top-down Diablo-style spin-off to the series. I'll take isometric action over hack and slash any day of the week. Blizzard is rumoured to be working on Overwatch 2. That's as far as that goes really. Overwatch was originally meant to be an MMO, maybe the sequel will return to this? It seems odd to me, Overwatch is one of those games that a sequel just doesn't make sense. You just upgrade the game, you add to it. People are going to be spewing about their cosmetics, that is for real. And that is about a wrap for gaming news this week. e 3s about to kick off, enjoy it. I'll be out of reception for a few days and I'll do a wrap up next weekend when I catch up on all the juicy goss myself. Adios muchachos.